Welcome guys to a new video. If you don't know me, my name is Andy. Welcome to my channel. I basically ramble about books here on the tube. And today I wanted to make a video because I feel like I've never properly talked on my channel about my favorite books. I've talked about them in certain videos, but I thought it would be cool to do one video at least a year and see which are my five favorite books of all time because they do change, guys. I can say that I read two books books this year that made it to my top five. So I'm interested to see if next year, for example, when I'll be filming that video again, will I have new books that bumped others down to make it to my top five. So without further ado, let's jump into the books. I will not be ranking them from one to five because they're like different genres. I feel like you can't really compare them, um, but I will leave my very, very favorite of all time for the end of the video. Before we start, I'd like to give a honorable mention to one book because it was too hard just to pick five. And my honorable mention goes to A Clockwork Orange by Anthony Burgess. So this is what I would consider a modern classic because it was published in 1971. There's even a movie adaptation of it from my favorite director of all time, Stanley Kubrick. This is actually how I learned about the book because I watched the movie first. Um, I do want to say that this book is really not for everyone. It's really heavily based on violence. And there are some trigger warnings specifically for rape, for example, but basically this is set in a futuristic England. And somehow citizens are blind to the fact that there is a really violent group of teenagers that's like really growing and that basically violence is growing in England. So in the book, we follow our main character, Alex. Alex leads a small group of violent teenagers that he calls his droogs. And basically they go around and beat people up and rob people. And and um, following one specific crime that is, once again, very triggering, I do want to mention that, um, Alex gets caught and goes to prison. While on his prison journey, Alex gets selected to be the very first candidate in a, I would say, experimental treatment that's kind of like a form of brainwashing that really incorporates associative learning. So basically, the treatment that he undergoes is that he gets injected a substance that makes him really, really sick, and then he's being forced to watch like ultra-violent movies. And so the objective of the treatment is that Alex will associate violence to nausea and he will never be violent again. So I would say this is a very weird book. And once again, this is really, really not for everyone. But I feel like when you're reading this book, you really want to find, you know, certain clues about certain themes such as, you know, good versus evil or uh, morality or the general concept of order in society versus freedom of choice. Um, any Anyways, it was a super good book. What I really liked about this book also is that there is a slang in this book that you kind of have to learn to understand the book. It's called Natsat and they use it in the movie as well. I would highly suggest if you are interested in this book to find an edition that has the glossary of the terms because otherwise it could be very, very confusing. Mine did have it and I really found myself always like going back and forth into it because for example, they would call it an old woman a babuchka. They would say chipuka for nonsense. So it could get really, really confusing. Um, but once again, I feel like this whole new language really adds to the enjoyment of the book. And yeah, this is my honorable mention. All right, so moving on to my official five favorite books of all time. While we are in the theme of classics, why don't we stay in it? The first one I have to show you is The Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde. This was published in 1890, so it's really a classic that stood the test of time. Um, this is Oscar Wilde's only novel because all of his other works are either short stories or plays. And I do want to say that Oscar Wilde was a very controversial author. So mainly Oscar Wilde was an author that was highly, highly focused on aestheticism and heathenism. He would really promote the idea of the supremacy of art and that people who see beauty in things, specifically in artistic things, are kind of like higher people than the average person. And for that reason, a lot of people will read his works and just not enjoy it for that. And the premise of this book really revolves around heathenism. So. Just letting you know. I would say we have four important characters in this book, but our two main characters are Dorian Gray and Lord Henry. And at the beginning of the book, 
Dorian meets Lord Henry, who's a very, like, narcissistic person that once again values beauty above anything else. And Lord Henry tells Dorian, like, oh, you have a pretty face, but after you will age, you will basically become ugly, which means you will be a very insignificant person. We have another character that's called Basil. He's a painter and he paints Dorian Gray. And Dorian is just amazed by the beauty of the painting. And he makes a prayer saying that he wants to remain young forever. So basically what happens is that Dorian sells his soul for eternal youth. I will leave it at that because the plot goes kind of beyond that but I feel like this book really has to be read first of all for the writing style which is absolutely exceptional but also for just like learning about hedonism and learning about these characters who just value you know pleasure and beauty above morality. Once again I do feel like this book really stood the test of time and Lord Henry is a super controversial character character but you do get attached to him very much and I feel like just like with anything that Oscar Wilde ever wrote everything is quotable from this book um so if you're looking for a classic I highly suggest the picture of Dorian Gray kombucha Okay, so moving on to a book that made it this year onto my five favorite books of all time. I'm sorry if I'm getting repetitive because I've talked about it recently because I've read it recently. And that is The House in the Cerulean Sea by TJ Klune. I challenge you to find at least two people that didn't like this book. I'm sure you will not be able. Um, so this is an adult fantasy, but I feel like this really reads well for any ages. And if you're not someone who likes fantasy in general, please hear me out. This is a low fantasy, meaning that it's in a fantastical version of our own world. So um, anyway, so basically this follows our main character, Linus Baker. He's a very solitary man. He lives alone, doesn't really have like relatives or friends around him. Um, he has this cat, you know, Know, he does his little nine to five job and he works as a care worker for the Department of Magical Youth. So his job is basically to go to orphanages for magical children and make sure that, you know, they're treated nicely. So at the beginning of the book, he's given a very curious assignment, which is to go to this orphanage that's like on a remote island where six magical children live. And these children are believed to be very, very dangerous. They could potentially end the world. Now, I don't want to say how they're magical. I feel like if you you read like the synopsis on Goodreads you will see it but if you've never ever heard about this book I suggest going into it blind and discovering the magic of these children as you're reading but basically he's gonna go there and the whole story is about you know Linus forming a relationship with these kids with the caretaker of the orphanage and really truly finding a place of love and belonging in somewhere where he would have never expected to find it I feel like you could kind of understand that from the synopsis but these children are said to be very dangerous but they're basically very harmless and the book really explores various themes but makes a good social commentary on how in our society we treat people that are different and I feel like that's really what the author tried to convey in this book. Um, the writing is absolutely astonishing and the characters are so so well executed. There's also I find a good commentary on bureaucracy and how people in high executive positions whether like in government or in corporate could tend to make decisions that impact the lives of people based on their own biased opinions and values and shitty values basically. One thing that people on booktube keep saying is that this book is a big hug and that it needs to be protected and that's exactly how I feel about it. I urge you to pick up this book if you haven't already. Okay next on my top five we have another book that I've talked a couple of times on my channel so apologies if you have been here since the beginning. I love you. Uh, and that is An Ember in the Ashes by Saba Tahir. So this is a YA fantasy and it's set in the fictional Martial Empire, which is basically pretty much inspired by ancient Rome. And in this world, we have two groups. So we have the scholars and the marshals. The marshals invaded the scholars many, many years ago. And because of that, the scholars are kind of seen as lesser people. And in this book, we follow two main characters, Laia, which is a scholar and basically a slave, and Elias, which is a marshal. At the very beginning of the book, Laia's family home gets raided by marshals and her brother gets kidnapped for reasons that she cannot understand. And she wants to go and find him back. So along the way, she will meet with a group of rebels and they will make a deal 
deal together. They will agree to help her in her search for her brother, but in exchange, she will have to infiltrate the Marshall Empire as a spy. Now, on our second perspective, we follow Elias. So Elias is a Marshall, but he's really tired of all like the tyranny and the empire, and he just wants to leave and doesn't really know how. And what we know is that he is to train in the trials that will basically determine who the next emperor will be. So along the way, they will meet and the rest, you know, you have to read the book to understand what happens. Um, I adored this book for many, many reasons. First of all, this book is extremely fast paced, but also I feel like there's a lot of subgenres in this book that I personally really enjoy. So if you're someone who likes, you know, military fantasy, political intrigue, if you're someone who likes books that are low on the romance. I think this is a good one. While there is some romance because it's a YA, it's not that heavy, which is very nice. Um, I personally love books that are on dual perspectives as well. And once again, super, super action packed. There's even like fantastical creatures in this book that are inspired by South Asian mythology, which is completely new to me. Oh, this book is just like everything in a book. I keep recommending this to everyone. And while I didn't love the second book as much as the first one, I still consider this to be one of my favorite books of all time. The fourth and final book just came out. So if you're someone who wants to read a series, like once all the books are published, you're in for a treat. All the four books are out. Okay, moving on, we have The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid. That's another one, like, I, I challenge you to go find someone who really did not like this book, like, genuinely. I'm sure you will not, because, gosh, this book is good, okay? Taylor Jenkins Reid is an amazing author, I keep saying it, I will read everything she writes. So basically, our main character, Evelyn Hugo, who is now aging, used to be a Hollywood movie star, like, in the 50s all the way to the 80s, I believe. And basically, her whole career, she kept her private things very private. So all that people really know is that she had seven husbands. So at the beginning of the book, um, she meets a woman called Monique, which is a, you know, re relatively average journalist and asks her to write her biography. And she will, she tells her, I will tell you everything about me if you are willing to write my story. So the book really follows her whole career from the 50s all the way to her retirement. And the way the book is divided is actually really interesting. So you will see once in a while like the husband's names and you will follow her story through her seven husbands. And there's even like little snippets of newspapers. Um, really great. There is a huge, huge plot twist in this book that I, I haven't even found anyone that read this book that saw it coming. And that plot twist was like, like mind blowing. After this twist, I immediately knew that this would be a five star. Like, oh, it's amazing. Um, the ending also is absolutely chef's kiss. This is such an atmospheric read. You will really transport yourself through, you know, the 1960s Los Angeles and the show business. The characters are amazing, all of them. <sighs> read this book, please. Do yourself a favor, read this book. And now, finally, we are down to my favorite book of all time. If you have been following my channel, you already know what it is. But if you haven't and you're new, what's up? My favorite book of all time, I actually read three months ago and I have probably been thinking about it ever since, every single day of one specific character. And that is Miss Bourne, The Final Empire by Brandon Sanderson. Kind of a surprise because this is an adult fantasy. I believe, okay, wait. It's said to be an adult fantasy, but you could also find this book in the YA section. This is actually the YA cover, so it really reads well for both audiences. And what's funny is that I'm very new to the adult fantasy genre, and I was very intimidated by Brandon Sanderson's work because he's known to be, first of all, to have books that are very, very long, um, but also very complex. But I was told that Mistborn is a great introduction to adult fantasy. It reads really nicely. It's very uh, fast-paced. So that's why I picked it up, and gosh... I was not disappointed. So this book is the first book in the Mistborn trilogy. There are two trilogies, but um, they're basically this thing because they're not set in the same like timeline, but they follow the same magic system anyways. And it's set in a world that's controlled by the Lord Ruler. So this is like this immortal tyrant that's been ruling for like a thousand years, and he is basically feared by everyone. And in this world, we have a magic system that's called Allomancy, which means that people with that power could ingest 
enhanced metals and enhance their physical or their mental abilities. So we have two types of people that have this magic. We have mist things. So that would be someone who's able to ingest only one metal and have the specific power that comes with it. And you have mistborn, which are people who can ingest all of the magical metals and have all the powers that they grant. So through time, the people that have Allomancy have basically become noble because the Lord Ruler or the Empire basically gave those people the noble title. And so the rest of them that are not Allomancers are called Ska and they're basically slaves and they work for the nobility. So in this book we have like a lot of characters but our two main ones are Vin and Kelsier. Vin is a street urchin. She's 16 years old. She doesn't even know that she has magical powers, but she learns that she is a Mistborn through Kelsier, who initially recruits her at the beginning of the book because he wants to overthrow the final empire. Now, Kelsier is kind of a rebel. He's not a noble, but he is a Mistborn. So that's what we learn is that a lot of people are half Ska and half noble because they were born from, you know, a union between a Mistborn and a Ska. And anyways, so he does recruit with him a group of people that are Alamancers. And his strategy is basically to create a war between the noble houses and then on the side, train an army of Ska's to defeat the empire. So throughout the book, he will teach Vin to become a noble woman and to infiltrate the courts to spy on them and train his army on the side. This book honestly has so many elements to it that make it so, so great. I feel like if you're someone who, first of all, really likes strong world building and magic systems, you are in for a treat. But also personally, my favorite type of fantasy is really political uh, fantasy. And I really, really like court intrigue and all the drama. And that book is like all of that. Um, what I really, really liked about this book also is that there's a lot of strategy behind it. And it's very well explained. I'm someone who prefers, especially in a military military or like army context, the strategy that they want to use to overthrow the empire instead of just the battles. And I feel like this was really heavy on the strategy. I really like those scenes where all the characters would meet together and kind of like brainstorm on how they wanted to do certain things. The characters are also freaking great, like all of them. I swear to God, like this book has nothing bad about it. I mean, yeah, it's long. It's like about 650 pages but it doesn't feel long because it's always moving. It's super fast paced. There's always a bunch of action. It will probably take a long time before one book bumps this one down to become my favorite book of all time because this is too good. Alrighty guys, so that concludes my five favorite books of all time as of May, 2021. I'm super excited to film this same video, maybe a year from now, see how I feel about it, if some of these books are still there or not. If you have read any of these books, let me know down below. What did you think? If you have a different opinion than mine, please let me know. I love chatting with people who have different opinions. So as always, if you have liked this video, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. And if you're not subscribed to my channel already and you like this kind of content, don't forget to click that subscribe button. It's super helpful to help me grow my channel and bring more of these videos out for you guys. Thank you so much for watching as always. I'll see you soon in my next one. Bye.